Mike, you, uh, you are a veteran. Um, mm -hmm. Many would say you are a patriot. Um, you served your country in uh, politically and as well as in the military. Um, does it bother you to hear that p others and many who have backed you and who have backed President Trump saying these are just patriots voicing their opinions and, you know, almost justifying what that mob did. As a, as a veteran and a congressman, does that term using patriot to describe them, does that bother you? It, here's what bothers me. What bothers me is what I said in the first statement, that when someone crosses that line of no longer a peaceful protest, which is well protected under that constitution, that I swore to defend as my time in the Marine Corps and swear to uphold with every elected office that I've held. And no one stepping across that line is justified in doing so. Whether it is from the left or whether it is from the right. That is not how we do things in this United States. We have been a beacon to other nations and know this, what bothers me also is other nations have watched what's taken place. My hope is, is that we find those who are willing to find that peaceful ground that our constitution for, to not hate someone because they might differ in a belief. I will stand against any person elected or unelected who wants to destroy our constitution. I really will but understand you need to know and understand what it says before you uh, say you're, you're standing for it. And, and right now there is so much hate flying around Mark that it is just, it, I can't describe how much it breaks my heart. Um, and I went through the airport on my way home and you were right. There are people that were trying to defend breaking into the Capitol and I can't defend that. Um, I, I, I can't. I wouldn't have defended it if the left did it, and I can't defend it if the right does it. Um, President Trump and his son uh, and others were at a rally prior to this yeah. incident happening. Uh, I listened to comments from both. Uh, some have said that they incited this mob some of their words stoked the flame that caused these people to then take it upon themselves to cross the line. Do you feel like either of them are culpable in this? I don't, I don't think they're culpable. I do believe that, you know, many people have never liked how Donald Trump speaks. He's a, a, a New York business guy and he kind of just lets it fly out there. Um, the problem is, is that and remember, he's never claimed to be a politician. Many people who have served in these offices have learned to be careful on the words they say. No matter what a person says, it doesn't justify violating the law. If the person says something and, and he's upset, he was upset. Um, I did call on him late in the afternoon to stop to send a message out, he did come out and give that message. I would have even given that message a little different. He said, it doesn't justify what happened there. It is like, and I'm not gonna compare and, and say, well, they did it and they did it, but it's also a case where when we've seen the riots in Oregon and uh, uh, Seattle and, and the list goes on and on, the leadership of the Democrat party hasn't denounced, very few of them have denounced that either. So I hope and that we will be able to come together to try to cool this and calm it down. I do not, um, I don't believe that the president nor his son, if they thought that it was gonna cause them to actually break into the building would have said anything to cause that. And that's a judgment call that, that I don't think, you know, if, if you hated Trump already, you're going to make the judgment call and say, see, he did that. 
If you didn't, then you don't feel like that that was what pushed it over the top. There had to be something else. Whatever pushed it over the top, we've got to cool the flames, come back together, and calm and peaceful minds for the sake of the future for our children and grandchildren must pre prevail. Uh, we are still a constitutional republic, and we need to remember what that means. We hold to the Constitution. We have debate, and there's nothing wrong with debate. We need to make sure that free and open debate still can occur because there's many that are trying through house rules and other issues to try to stifle that First Amendment right, even for elected officials. So I'm hoping that that's not the case. You've touched on this already somewhat. Um, you, you've talked about the hate that is in our country today and some of the ways that we have to get past this. But my final question for you, Mike, would be what must our country do moving forward now and in the near future to heal from this incident? Right. I believe that what we must do first off is there's a couple things. One is we need to allow that transition of power. Not with rioting, protesting. You can protest all you want, but not with rioting. And then the electorate, if they were not happy with the election results, remember that except in those cases where it was not the legislature that handled the election law, go back to those states to make sure, if you are from those states, make sure that your state legislators put into their election law something that will re-secure the feeling of the American people that we have free, open, and fair elections. If we can do that with the state's powers, which is the way it's supposed to be in the Constitution, and calm down. Now, the question is, like I said, we, you and I talked about, about the impeachment. Okay, both sides calm down. Let the, let's, let's let the next 12 days go by. Let's go back to work. And there's gonna be things that we'll be upset about that the Democrat administration is gonna be put in. And guess what? I will debate that on the floor. I will be vocal about it. I will not take up arms. I will not destroy property. And I will not get in any physical contact with anyone over that. But I will use every power of, uh, that I have been elected and given through the constitution, peacefully. Well, Mike, thank you much for, uh, for taking time to talk with us. Thank you. Um, there's so many more things I would like to talk to you know, for another day. Uh, okay. We could go on for, for quite a long time, but uh, I hope you and your family are well in the new year and, um, and hopefully uh, cooler heads will prevail there.